Hello YouTube. To anyone that works at Disney, more specifically Disney Plus, this video is for you. Watch it. I just finished watching Daredevil Season 3. My god, man. I was in no way at all prepared for the season of TV. One of the greatest seasons of TV I've ever seen, period. I just did my last video essay about the Punisher Season 2, uh, right before that got cancelled as a matter of fact. Rest in peace to all the Marvel Netflix shows. But Daredevil Season 3 deserves that video's title more than Frank Castle does. As I ramble on and on, you will find how bad I want to cover every single aspect of every single episode uh, and just how incredible it is. These shows have had filmmaking elements that have been executed so perfectly uh, and, and also the stories and how they tell them. Dude, Daredevil Season 3 was damn near perfect. There's a reason for that. Now... I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be as honest as I can here, and I'm going to take the blow. I, straight up, don't think that Disney+, Plus, even if they renewed every single canceled show, I don't think they would do the same justice to these shows that's already been done to them. Let me explain myself. There's been some internet news surfacing recently that states... The Marvel Netflix shows that have been canceled, the characters in those shows can't be used for a minimum of two years. Um, that sounds bad. It's really not, though, when you consider how long we've had to wait for some of the shows in between the seasons. Because Netflix, the way that they drop their shows, they just drop the season off. That's it. All episodes. Daredevil Season 3 is going to be my example this time. Dude, <laughs> this season caught me way the hell off guard. God forgive me. Leave him. Let's get out of here. I completely forgot what Daredevil was all about. Um, this time around, though, they changed it up. They made it more like a suspense thriller, which is the show gets good credit for that. And the show works because of that, you know, getting suspense and thrills, such high stake thrills because of the TV MA rating. I hate to jump right to the obvious point first, but it's it's true, it really is. The characters in these shows, the one that you care for immensely, way too much. When things happen to them, it hurts you that much more and it makes you feel for the characters because of them getting impacted by the same horrifying deaths and the <laughs> way too adult and way too goddamn real use of government manipulation by Wilson Fisk. This season goes back to the first season heavily. Like, the writers actually paid attention to what fans didn't like from season two. So they ditched that shit in the Defenders, cooked up one hell of a story, and they gave us uh, Daredevil's... The MCU's great... Dude, they gave us two of the greatest villains since Heath Ledger's Joker to Christian Bale's Batman. Shout out to High Top Films who literally said exactly, exactly how I felt when I watched that. Wilson Fisk, he's terrifying. If you aren't going to guess if he's just going to bash somebody's skull in, then you're just in awe of how worthy this character became of the, of the title Kingpin. The dude practically owned all of New York City, and it shows throughout this season. And Dax, Bullseye, I'm going to call him Bullseye, okay, was such a perfect physical threat for Matt because up close Matt would kick his ass you know on the ropes that's that's Matt's specialty right there and Bullseye's aimbot kept his ass at a distance you know and if not that he's trying to throw something at someone to try and kill them because you know he can and that's terrifying my point is these two dudes alone do some pretty messed up shit to some of our protagonists especially the the punches like the punch the emotional punch, the the shock value punch from something like Bullseye whipping a baton at somebody's head, or the <laughs> ultra surreal punch from this show making you deep down believe that every establishment you've known could possibly be run by a guy like Wilson Fisk. That is just some other level terrifying shit. Never mind that he concaved someone's skull with their own jacket, okay? If Disney Plus is to be a a TV channel network. That's it. Kiss your shows goodbye. They can they can 
bring back all the same actors and everything, the content will not be the same. It will most likely be regulated so that it fits TV guidelines. But uh, I'm 95% certain that Disney announced that Disney Plus was going to be a streaming service, meaning an app or a website or both. If that's the case, Disney, you need to allow TVMA. You need to allow adult restrictions. I'm going to be cliche here. Look at R-rated movies like Deadpool and Logan, which weren't successful because of simply because of their R rating, but because those characters couldn't be justified by catering to kids. Another example of this, Batman v Superman. All I needed was just a little blood in that warehouse fight scene. Presto. Disney needs to realize that the word Disney isn't just associated with the mouse or the land or the world anymore. It's no secret, Disney owns a lot of shit. One of those things is Marvel and they don't have all the film rights to all of Marvel's characters, Marvel Comics' characters, but they do have the Punisher. If Disney wants to keep using Marvel in film and TV, they have to know it has to be done right. And there's just no cor correct way to do a Punisher TV 14 show. It just, just, just can't. Developed uh, people, <laughs> developed people, anywhere from teens, young teens, to people in their 30s. Either way, they, we, give a shit about content quality. Okay, if I don't sound crazy yet, uh, this will do it. Not every show needs to be TVMA. Okay, so how do you decide what will be TVMA, what will be TV14? You know, like, where do you draw the line? Uh, it's a very good question. I have the answer, my friend. Netflix has rolled out, you know, five character shows and one team-up show with excellent, excellently written characters and stories and all that stuff. Great shows overall. So, if legally possible, of course, Disney should just keep rolling those shows out like nothing changes. Like nothing changes the next time we see our beloved Matt Murdock and Frank Castle and company. The same shows that are a part of, that are, have always been a part of, the same MCU that Josh Brolin Thanos is in. And don't give me that multiverse bullshit. Daredevil Season 3 is one of the best seasons of TV in existence. I'm serious. His internal battle with himself, uh, struggling with his his double life, is honestly a better told and more compelling and heartfelt story than Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2. Oh. I know that's one serious claim to make, but the and, the, and part of that is only be, because the only other TV Spider-Man TV show uh, that mattered also got canceled. Rest in peace. Spectacular Spider-Man who absolutely nailed Peter Parker as a character. I've never been so on the edge of my seat before I saw Karen Page just talking mad shit to Wilson Fisk's face and about how she killed Wesley. I killed Wesley. I shot him seven times because the clip ran out. He deserved more. Don't move! Bulletin fight scene between Daredevil and Bullseye was so nerve-wracking uh, to see how threatening Bullseye is to Matt, or anyone really. This show made a lot of people feel a lot of different ways. Fans would hate to see this show, the shows, these shows either go to waste or just be some rehash that will maybe like it first, then end up giving the same treatment that I gave Arrow after a few seasons. Dude, there's a huge internet campaign called Save Daredevil. Dude, Charlie Cox signed that campaign and he made his baby uh, daughter, I think, a Twitter account so she could sign that shit. Dude, there's billboards like in America, like across cities, billboards that have the Save Daredevil campaign on it. Disney. Listen to me. Listen to some random 22-year-old kid from the internet because I am your demographic. I know you are just, just stupid rich, mighty, all-powerful. You're, ba you're basically God of the entertainment industry. I acknowledge that. Marvel is one of the best things to ever happen to you and not exclusively just the films or the TV shows, but the entire fictional universe you inherited. And as far as keeping fans wanting more from the shows that you'll eventually put back out, 
Marvel is nothing more than a tool. If you don't know how to use it right, it's useless. Oh. The writers from Daredevil gave all the shits they could give writing the show and making the show as just wonderful, just a masterpiece. The masterpiece that it is, we owe it to them. And it would just be truly disappointing to see Disney squander the opportunity they have here with these characters. And I honestly couldn't even decide what would be worse if they just, the shows never came back or they got a reboot. And with all that having been said, now we wait for Disney's reply. There's more to it than that. There's more to why these shows are successful. There's a number of reasons as to why these shows, this, but Daredevil season three, why that works. Uh, dude, the cinematography, every single frame in this show is literally like, it's like a painting. It's so beautiful. And if it's not just awesome to look at, there's a, there's a reason for a certain camera angle, whether it be to build suspense, to invoke, evoke, whatever, a certain emotion from you, etc., etc. Actors, the supporting characters, everyone gives a shit. They all are passionate about this thing and they know that they can make a good show if you try. But yeah, I hate to say it. The TVMA rating, you need to have it. Give me your jacket. Especially if it's in your plans to bring back the wonderful cast and, you know, the characters. These characters are established already. So if you're going to bring them from the Netflix uh, medium to the Disney Plus medium, you already have it laid out. You need to keep following those same guidelines because people like it. I think it's time to, it's okay. We're becoming okay. The same people that watch these Marvel movies grew up probably reading the comics. I've read a few Marvel comics myself when I was a kid and I, you know, paper comics, I didn't get into those. The demographic has changed a little bit. Obviously you can still cater to kids if you want, but dude, kids are getting desensitized, Disney. Don't even act like kids aren't already playing Call of Duty by the time they're six. You guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this, this is my second time doing a video, essay type video. Uh, if you like it, subscribe and all that stuff. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Please.